2020 has been a wild year in the sport of boxing, but those opportunistic have been able to make a big bang. You want to know who bangs? Edgar Berlanga, bang. one of the rising stars in this sport. 16 and 0, 16 first round KOs. The chosen one joining us today on Morning Combat. Uh, Edgar, bro, you're on fire. You're on fire right now. Fire, fire. You know this is this is what uh. This is what I prayed for, man, you know, for day, for days like this to come, you know, and we're just getting started. Um, listen, man, we know we're near where I want to be, where I'm going to be. You know, all I know is that I just got to continue to work hard and just stay focused. 23 and oh, I'm sorry, 23 years old. I mentioned the gaudy unbeaten record top rank moving you quickly on ESPN because uh, you've gained a following, not just one of boxing fans, but celebrities. I see you linked with Snoop Dogg. I see you linked with Fat Joe. Um, has this all happened seemingly overnight to go from prospect we know the name of to, like, guy I need to tune into every single time you fight? Yeah, man. You know, um, I, I manifested what's going on this year. The beginning of the year, I said, this is my year. I'm a blow. But then the corona, you know, the, the pandemic hit, you know, COVID hit, you know, New York City hard. And, you know, the, the March fight went out, you know. So, you know, I had a I had a big a big uh, coming out party, you know, in March out here in, in New York. But um, the pandemic hit, you know, so it really like messed everything up. It slowed everything down, the process. But I knew that this was my year, you know, but it was just it, it would have hit faster. But since the pandemic, you know, everything happened with the COVID and stuff, it, it ended off perfectly fine, you know. And, you know, now we're here. Well, look, the hottest you know, prospect in the world. You're Brooklyn born, and, and fighters are certainly bred in Brooklyn for, for, for centuries. And you've got the background of, of Puerto Rico behind you. I mean, you're in uh, cahoots with a legend like Felix Trinidad. I feel like we should have seen this coming, being that, that all the, uh, the foundation is there. But uh, how much have you improved in the past year or so to really make this happen where you are gaining this much attention? Um, you know what it was, man? Just me staying humble and staying in the gym. You know, none of this would have happened if I would have never been working hard. You know, if I would have been slacking and, and cutting corners, I wouldn't be here, you know, because for me, it's like God – put something on the plate for me and you know he told me if you work hard you know if you continue to do what's right you're gonna have everything you ever wanted and you know that's what I'm doing and I'm following that you know and I'm sticking to it and it's just it's unfolding you know everything is unfolding it feels like it feels unreal you know I, sometimes I wake up you know last night I was just in Tracy Morgan's mansion you know I was getting wow. a massage there you know and and um I fell asleep. The lady was massaging me and I woke up and he was talking. He was talk trying to talk to me, but I was knocked out. And I woke up and I'm like, I looked at my girl and I said, babe, we in Tracy Morgan's mansion. <laughs> like, you know, I've been there already four times, five times, you know, but I j it just really hit me yesterday. Like, yo, we in Tracy Morgan's mansion. Like, he got Rolls Royce, like five Rolls Royces parked outside, you know? Bro, you got to answer me this when did this sort of connection to celebrity happen for you? Because we don't typically see guys who have 16 pro fights to be this recognized by the, by, you know, Tracy Morgan, Snoop Dogg. Was there a moment that put you on their radar? Yeah. You know, um, it was last year. I could say, you know, it started off with, uh, first off, it started off with when I had nine fights, eight fights where I had the, the Spanish artists from the Spanish, you know, from the music industry, um, um, following me, you know, I had a couple of them already, already around like seven, eight fights. You know, I had a gang here. I had a lot of people that 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 really, you know, pushed me, and and uh, it started off like that, you know, and then eventually I got, I got in touch with uh with, with Fat Joe, and then um, you know, it just kept going, man. And every fight I get more and more people just you know with Fat Joe posting me up, you know, and then me meeting Tracy. You know, and me being with Tracy up and down is like people just started recognizing and like, oh shit, like this kid is really with the big stars, you know? Like I had Joe and Tracy talking on the phone yesterday. I, I FaceTime Joe, <laughs> you know, Fat Joe, and Joe like, yo, Tracy, man, I'm doing my, my lives, you know? He's doing these lives and he's been dying for Tracy to get on it. And he said Tracy been ducking him. 
you know, so I put, so they sorted everything out, you know, and Tracy was like, oh man, I'm going to speak to my publicist to see if I get on, you know, on your live. Cause they had a whole bunch of stories, man, from back in the days in the Bronx that we was talking about is crazy, you know, but it's just, it's just crazy how I'm, I'm actually reconnecting these people, you know, uh, like it, Tracy having spoken to Snoop Dogg in a while, I FaceTime Tracy and they go crazy. Oh my God. You know, because these, these people have their own lives, you know? And it's just amazing that I got the opportunity to really like just connect these people back. That's it's wild. It's wild to see you in the spot, and and it and it's it's exciting to see. And I certainly love the balance you're saying between being humble, listening to God, knowing that you're on a path. But yeah. the more you get gain, you know, success, you're going to gain celebrity, and there's certainly you know a pull there. We've seen fighters get attention and sort of fall apart. How much are you consciously already before you even enter, enter the title picture, thinking about how to keep this thing going and, and going as strong as possible? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm ready for it all, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for it all. You know, people probably that don't know me probably think, oh, this kid, let's see if he's going to fall. Let's see if he's going to be like the other ones, the other, the other, New York cats that had all the celebrities behind them, but it's different, man. I'm a different breed. I got a different team. My father, I've, I've grown up in a great household, you know, and that's, that's very important, man, is your household and how you was brought up. And I was brought up so good, man, and, and with morals, you know, and, and knowing that not to get caught up in the hype, you know, and if I do get a little big headed, they bring my family brings me right back down. If I if I could tell you the conversations that I had since this fight with my family, you'd be like, holy shit, nah, yeah, he, this kid is ready. You know, it's just my sisters calling me from Florida, my other sister, my brother, you know, and they just giving me in Spanish they say consejo and it's like um, you know, wisdom. I love you know, it. You know, that's they just give me wisdom and knowledge, you know, and that just keeps me strong, keeps me grounded. You know, like I was just on the phone. Uh, the day before yesterday with Lil Wayne, you know, he called me FaceTime and I was like, I got off the phone and I told my girl, I said, hey, I was just on the phone with Lil Wayne. Like, so what, so what is fuck? the pull? What is the pull here? You think that, that you have become I'm such a such hot a name in the celebrity community? Do they see you as the next big brand in boxing? The next big oh, guy yeah. they can identify with? Yeah, man. They, they, you know, Lil Wayne told me, he said, Lil Wayne told me, he said, yo, I'm going to tell you something, champ. I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. And I watched boxing for a lot of years, man. He said, I study you. I know you can box. That's what's so dangerous. He said, yo, they, they could try to make a hundred, a hundred of you. And they won't be able to. He said, you a legend. You don't even know that, but you a legend, man. He told me like that. And it's coming from a legend himself telling me that. And I'm like... I'm like, nah, this dude's not like I'm on I'm on FaceTime with little fucking Wayne, man. Like, this dude I watched him growing up since a kid, bro. And I'm on FaceTime with him. I'm like, oh, and then he he's a fan, like he's a supporter. He wants, he wants to. I have my my, my cousin, you know, she she makes a cardboard box. He wants to, he wants me to make a cardboard box of myself so he can have it in his studio. Wow, wow. I, look, this is impressive stuff, but let's talk about how you've been able to build this in the ring. This yeah. first round knockout streak is wild. I've got to imagine that, you know, it's a blessing. Could it end up being a curse if you focus too much on it? How much are you in to the idea of being known as this, you know, one round man? Is that something you want to you see want this streak it. going? Because you may be better off if somebody takes you into the seventh, eighth, ninth round. Um, yeah. You know, just like how they had doubts in Tiafimo. Oh, let's see if he could go 12 rounds. Let's see if he could... You know, there was a lot of doubts with him. He proved them wrong, you know, and, and and I'm the same way, man. I love to prove people wrong. You know, I love the haters. You know, I have a lot of a lot of people talking out there. Ah, oh, he I don't know, he he got a step up competition, he gotta do this. But nobody don't understand that my first 16 fights, I fought way better opponents than Canelo Alvarez, than Mike Tyson, and then list could go on. You get what I'm saying? My first 16 fights, if you put all the records together, man. Is out is out is is crazy. So it's obviously I'm not fighting taxi drivers. I'm not fighting Walmart employees. I'm fighting people that's durable. You know, top rank is trying to put me in there with durable people that could take me those rounds, and they can't. It's not my fault. I hit hard. It's not my fault. You know, don't blame me. You know, 
Talk when to, did have, you know? Talk to God. Ask him why he blessed me with this power. That's what I was going to ask. When did you know that, that this power was different from being, you know, an up and coming prospect who can hit? When, <laughs> when did you know there's something special going on in those hands? Um, I think well, I, I remember my, I think it was like my, my fourth or fifth uh, pro fight. I was like, shit, I really hit hard. You know, I didn't really. I, and remember, people don't know, but people in the amateurs, and this is what they told Top Rank. Top Rank, that's why Top Rank is more, more believing now. Because people that was in the amateurs with me, who was, you know, in Vegas, they told them, they said, yo, man, y'all don't understand. This kid, Edgar, can fucking box. He boxed his whole amateur career. So you really think he's going to, that, that, that won't leave me at all. Especially if I'm in the gym working and working on it and working on it and working on my boxing, on my boxing skill, my IQ. You get what I'm saying? And, you know, top rank now was like, Oh, so he could really box, you know, not just one person, but numerous of people saying that he he's a boxer. And it's true. I'm a boxer. I could box my ass off. If I got a box and not get hit, trust me and believe I'm boxing my ass off 12 rounds. So, look, the ESPN broadcast played up this relationship you have with the, the great Puerto Rican icon, uh, Tito Trinidad. Uh, what has that, those sessions been like of getting that type of wisdom? I mean, what kind of dude is the great Felix Trinidad? Um, you know, it, it was a big, big deal for me, man. You know, a bit. It was a, it was a huge deal for me. It was a huge deal for me. Um, you know, being with him, man. Um, you know, really opened up my eyes on what boxing is really about. You know, and I said that on, on the interview I had. You know, um, Trinidad is, is is a living legend, man. You know, and uh, he's a guy that that's, that's got to the top of the top, especially especially as a Puerto Rican fighter. You know, um, he has uh, something that a lot of Puerto Rican fighters don't have in his charisma, and and the people and the and, and the people loving him. Uh, you can hear me? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, I you mean, know, look- and, and uh, and it's that that he had, and that's what made him so different than a lot of of the Puerto Rican fighters. You know, and um, at the end of the day, man, you know, it was just a blessing, and it really opened up my eyes as a fighter. You know, to really work hard and, 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 and bust my ass in the gym. Are you already thinking with the Hollywood connections you're building, with the attention you're getting, that this game is bigger than what happens in the ring, that you are going to get opportunities, whether it be entertainment of avenues or just to be able to have a platform to hear your – to people to hear your voice and your opinions? Are you already thinking about, you know, the business, the commercial side of where this could go? Yeah, you know – um. Listen, man, y'all don't understand. I have a lot of stuff in works right now. You know, I don't I don't just look at myself as a fighter. You know, I look at myself as a brand, as a business, you know, and I look at myself not only as a, a guy that's just knocking everything out, but I see myself in, in, in a bigger picture. You get what I'm saying? I see myself, you know, and in in doing movie deals and, and being in, in movies, you know, and in, in, in GQ magazines. This is the type of things that I see. You know, and, and that's coming next year, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm more than ready for it. You know, we saw on Showtime the, the great documentary Macho on the Hector Camacho story, and there's another, you know, Puerto Rican-born New York City icon. I'm just wondering, you know, in your history of being a fan growing up, how much you, if anything, took from Camacho from the idea of being next-level charismatic and that swagger that gets the attention. That, that, that's something I did pick up on. You know, he had a... Uh, you see, he, he, he was on uh, Dancing with the Stars. I think he lost, and they had to bring him back because he had so much viewer. That he brought so much viewership to, to, that, to, that, to that channel. And um, it really, that really woke me up was his, his charisma, you know? That charisma that he had, that he walked in a, a place, man, and he just, he just shined. You know, he joined so much people, man. And uh, that's something that I picked up on him was that, you know, to be that light because at the end of the day, I have that, I have the charisma, you know, I have everything that he has, the, the, the swag, you know, I'm from New York. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and that's something that I've seen in myself. And, you know, it's, it's just some, everything is unfolding now. All right, let, let's close with this. It's been great getting to know you, the man behind, you know, the knockout streak and all the attention 
How do, you, how do you build on this in 2021? I think the, the question everybody's going to have is how soon, and we respect the top rank matchmakers who did what you were saying, really put you in in the right test to get you ready for this spot. How soon do you make that big leap into legitimate title contention at 168 pounds? Um, you know, next year, I'm looking, this is my plan for next year. To obviously make more money, you know, break the bank. And I already told that to top rank. We break, it, we break in the bank. Um, you know, and uh, just step up in competition and uh, get in, uh, fight a couple um, guys that could take me rounds, get that experience, get my feet wet. Where I go into the fourth round, fifth round, but I take them out in the sixth, seventh, you know, and um, and then looking forward to 2022, man, to fight for a title, you know, and that's just the plan for 2021. Like I said, it's to make more money and just step up in competition, man, and get in a couple rounds. Do you see a guy, one guy, as your money fight, your early defining fight? Because I know sometimes these big fights, Mayweather-Pacquiao, they come at the end of guys' careers. But let's talk about Tito Trinidad. I mean, he fought Fernando Vargas at such a young time for both of them. Two young stars collided. I mean, do you see that with you and a Canelo or a Benavidez or a Caleb Plant in this division? Um, yeah, you know, I just got to prove myself. You know, I can't sit here and say – you know, I'm ready for these guys. Well, I'm ready for I, I'm, let, let me make this clear. I'm ready for them now. But I just want to prove myself. You know, I want to be able to have a, a resume behind me that I look back and say, yeah, let's get it on now. You know, I already I, I demolished these dudes. You know, now I, I prove myself. Let's get it. And I love it. I love that's it. just my, my mindset. That's my, my team's mindset and how we're thinking. And that's just the, the game plan we're going to follow. You got a good head on your shoulders, Edgar. I wish you a lot of luck. It's been so fun. I know it's crossing over when I'm getting all these MMA fans and journalists texting me going, what time's the Berlanga fight? What time's the Berlanga fight? I got to see this hey, kid again. I just got a text. I got 2.2 million viewers on, uh, on my fight, you know, the most of the night. So that just goes to show you, man, you know, I'm in event ready. He's ready. He's ready. 2021 is going to be big. He bangs. It's Edgar Berlanga, the super middleweight on the rise. We'll see if this streak can continue next year. Either way, he's streaking forward. Edgar, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. Thank you, man.